It's nice to see that the whole devil possession genre has gotten a shot in the arm as of late, and it turns out the devil's candy is part of that. Though the trailers would have you believe that this is some sort of heavy metal love letter to Satan himself, simply summing up the devil's candy that way would be a disservice to the true nature of what the film achieves. It's a short, gritty, yet hauntingly beautiful film from director Sean Bryan, The Loved Ones, that tells the story of passion, art, and the beast himself, and may be one of the finest examples of what satanic possession actually means in our real everyday lives. They're dead. Oh my god, I'm so sorry. I need to come home now. The film follows a struggling painter, Jesse, who, with his wife and teenage daughter, move into a new house that was once the scene of a murder. They get a visit from a stranger in a red tracksuit who used to live in the house, and directly after that, a bunch of weird shit starts happening. Jesse begins painting horrific scenes without even remembering that he did them, and more importantly, the bond between him and his daughter deteriorates, and he's not sure why. To sacrifice. He will slither into your soul. The Devil's Candy, in many ways, is a very simplistic story, and that's why I love it so much. Yet at the same time, there's much more bubbling below the surface. The acting all around is top-notch. The rather small cast, led by Ethan Embra, who looks as though he just walked off the set of a Rob Zombie movie, he gives his role real heart, and in fact, the entire family have fantastic chemistry together, and it's hard not to root for them to overcome both the figurative and legitimate demons they face. It really is the bond between these three leading cast members that make the film stand out in a genre that is overrun by stories about the devil. Though on the surface the plot may sound pretty familiar, I can without a doubt guarantee you have not seen a movie like The Devil's Candy. The actual devil possession is handled in such a way that it feels about as true to life as a story about the devil possibly could. It's like it flowed through me. I don't remember painting this. Not unlike another Devil Possession movie released last year, The Black Hood's Daughter, this film doesn't overdo it with the violence and effects that could have potentially led it down a path that would come off as cheesy or predictable, and instead opts for a more grounded tone. Add to all that that the aesthetic is so fresh and unique that it really gives a feel all its own. It's not only a horror film, but a love letter to heavy metal music, with plenty of nods and tips of the hat to both metal of old and new. The Devil's Candy is one of the most fascinating horror films I've seen in a long time. It's just about everything I look for in a modern genre film, something that hits the mark of being both a drive-in feature as well as offering something for those who want to search a little deeper. It can be enjoyed as both a heavy metal satanic haunted house film as well as analyzed and probed to find its true meaning and message for those brave enough to look for it. It's a possession movie that focuses on the bond between family more so than the forces that attempt to rip them apart. He is an active, violent, personal reality. It's a horror film with heart that offers likable characters a unique spin and vibe that will linger with you long after it's over. He's right. You are the sweetest candy of them all.